Good morning. Welcome to my MCAT study routine. This video is not only sharing how I structure my day studying full time for the MCAT, but also goes into detail on what I do each day to cover the enormous amount of content we're expected to know for the medical college admissions test. Hi friend, I'm Breland and this is Beauty and Brains, where I educate, equip, and inspire underrepresented minorities to not just survive, but thrive in higher education. Welcome to my channel. We're getting started with one of my top tips for if you're studying for professional exam, especially for a long period of time, and that is to not neglect your self-care, specifically working out. It took me months before I began working out again, and I noticed a big difference in my mood, in my energy, of course in my body, but also just in how I felt studying full time. So I would wake up and the first thing that I would do would be to work out. I try and wake up around 8.30 every morning, but it depends on how much I actually stay on my schedule. Sometimes I stay up later than I would like, which means I wake up later than I would like, but no matter how late I go to sleep, and no matter how early or late I wake up, I make sure that the first thing that I do is gym time. And for some of you guys who need a little bit more science behind it, I just wanna remind you that when we do high intensity exercises, our heart rate increases, supplying more blood flow to the brain, and the increased heart rate also increases our breathing, making us breathe harder and faster. As a result, more oxygen is supplied to our bloodstream, more oxygen reaches our brain. And this leads to neurogenesis, which is the production of neurons, and research has indicated that physical exercise increases neurogenesis in the hippocampus, which as we know, is the brain area that's important for learning and memory. So this is my favorite part of my morning routine because it is completely dedicated to me. I listen to what I wanna to listen to, and I watch what I wanna watch. I'm taking care of my body, and I'm also really taking care of my mind. So you guys can see we have a few equipment pieces here in my garage. I normally just use the treadmill, and I use this every time I work out. I don't always run several miles a day, but even on the days where I'm doing something light, I'll get on it, and I'll just walk like this, a brisk, light walk. <laughs> I'll also warm up on here if I'm doing a strength training day by doing moving squats and lunges. I talk about this in other videos as well, but during this time, and honestly, just throughout life, I'm very intentional about what goes into my ears. I started working out to the regular Apple workout playlist, but y'all, the music nowadays, it is so vulgar. So I actually ended up finding and creating my own gospel music workout playlist. It has allowed me to continue to pour into myself, pour positivity, and again, that just helped build not only my strength in my body, but also in my mind, and I highly recommend it for you guys. This is the main thing that's different from my normal everyday morning routine is that when I was preparing for the MCAT, I kept it very simple. I was wearing my natural hair most days and I would literally put on a different sweat set every single day. I mean, no shame in my game. We're here to study, not to look cute, but this is basically my study for the MCAT uniform. I mean, I would wear a matching set to study every single day. And don't mind this, I filmed some of these clips a different day, so that's why my hair is straight. So 
it's finally breakfast time and I don't do anything too crazy. I normally just make some type of rendition of eggs with spinach and bacon, sometimes a little bit of avocado, sometimes some tomato. But to be honest, most days I actually have my breakfast already meal prepped because I am practicing making my test day breakfast skillet. It's really good. It has um, potatoes and sausage and peppers and onions and eggs and cheese and spinach. It's really, really good. It kind of takes a minute to make, but when I do make it, I can meal prep it and eat it for the rest of the week. So most days I have practiced prepping that on Sunday and I'll eat that for the rest of the week. But for days like today, I'll just eat something simple like eggs and bacon. The key is to find a balance of something that will keep me full but not make me too tired because trust me, the worst thing is wanting to take a nap in the middle of studying. Speaking of, let's talk caffeine okay because for the days when you're not motivated you need to be caffeinated i go between two different things you guys know i used to hate coffee i never drank it but i literally have to start drinking coffee because i could not do the energy drinks every single day i do have to be careful with coffee because it can mess up my sleep schedule but when i do drink coffee i'll put it in this cute little starbucks matte black kind of fits the vibe very gothic very MCAT gel. I'll just do a little bit of cold brew, a lot of almond milk, and a lot of creamer. And that's like my go-to coffee mixture. But you guys know my one and only true love are the Celsius energy drinks. You can buy these in packs off of Amazon or individually in the grocery store. If you guys haven't tried these out, I'll have a link for them down below. They have so many different flavors. And these are basically healthy energy drinks. Also, these are really great to use. I mean, I believe they're meant to use as pre-workouts. And so sometimes if I'm really, really tired, if I stay up late at night I will drink a little bit of this before my workout and then I'll finish it on my way to Panera Bread. Speaking of that's where we're going next I study at home two days of the week and I try and go out two days of the week. I do have a home office here and basically my weekly schedule is I will go out on Mondays to Panera Bread. I'll work from home on Tuesdays. I take Wednesdays off. I go out on Thursdays. I stay home on Friday and Saturdays I alternate between the two. My rule of thumb is A, never skip a Monday. <laughs> kind of like how it is for the gym. Never skip a Monday leaving out. If I say I'm going to work from home on Monday, it's probably going to be a bad week. And number two, I decided to start taking Wednesdays off because again studying all day every day it can get really monotonous and at the end of the day I'm full-time studying so I can do what I want if I want to have a Saturday in the middle of the week I can do that but honestly I feel like it really helped with my productivity it made my Tuesdays feel like a Friday and it made my Thursdays feel like that good Monday where you like really want to get things done so again I just found myself to be more productive and also allowed my mind to just stay fresh taking a day off in the middle of the week really helped me out so I would recommend it to you guys if you feel like you need it I also want to mention how this is normally the time that I do my morning devotional and prayer and meditation and all that good stuff. And it was kind of random to do it at this point in time in the morning, but I found that this works best for me in regards to, again, my productivity, like really getting up and out of bed first thing in the morning instead of scrolling on my phone. I get up and I'm active. I'm away from all my socials. If I'm on my devices, it's only to watch a YouTube video, which relaxes me, or I'm watching YouTube videos to help me work out. And and then after I've gotten ready for the day and I sit down and eat my breakfast, then I go ahead and I spend some time with God. I feel like it really helps me, again, stay grounded and it motivates me and it puts me in the right mindset mentally and spiritually before I go out to study. So Panera Bread has a really special place in my heart because they were the only place that was open during this pandemic time to study. There's actually a lot of people who go there to study, people in school and business owners. When I first started studying, I went there every single day and the manager literally knows me by name. It got a little bit embarrassing so I don't go as often but honestly I'm still there like three times a week. It is a little bit noisy but I feel like it's better to study with distractions than without. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of how I study 
for the MCAT. I feel like I've kind of shared this with you guys before, but I guess this is more like an update on exactly what I used and how I used it. So first let me go through all of my materials. You guys know that I basically switch between using my iPad, my Apple Pencil, and my MacBook. Everybody always asks which type of iPad I have. I believe it's the seventh generation, and this is the first generation um, Apple Pencil. It's the one where you still have to plug into your iPad. And so, let's get into the nitty gritty. You guys know that I use a MCAT prep program. It's called Integrative MCAT Tutoring. If you wanna know my review and my recommendation of the program, stay tuned or check out my MCAT resources video. That's gonna tell you everything that you need to know about the program. However, I will say that the program had a lot of great resources included in it. And other than the live lectures, that's what I found to be the most helpful to help me study. And what were these amazing resources? It was a library of probably a hundred different review sheets. Within each major topic, physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, biology, physiology, even psychology, there were tons of review sheets specific to the major topics that were from the AMCAS, the AAMC content list. This would give you questions, about 30 questions per review sheet for each topic. I would go through and I completed each of these review sheets. Not only did it help me test my knowledge while learning the information, but it also helped me review the information in a quick and concise way after learning new topics. And it helped me build upon my knowledge. So it took me a while to find my workflow, but once I did, I had a full proof schedule that easily allowed me to keep track of which content topics I studied, practiced, and did well on. I was big on documenting my progress, so I created a Google Sheet with the dates leading up to my exam and the amount of lectures, review sheets I needed to complete each day. To complete each topic meant to watch the lecture, write out my own notes, compare them to the notes provided by the program to ensure that there were no gaps, complete the review sheet, transcribe the review sheet questions into Anki, which is a space repetition flashcard app, complete the deck for the day, and then do practice problems on UWorld, Jack Weston, Khan Academy, the Princeton Review textbook, or I did textbook problems provided and divided by the tutoring program, which was their homework. Now all of this work definitely requires a lot of energy. I forgot to mention that I pack a lunch every day. Even though I study at Panera Bread, I still pack my lunch one to save money and two to save calories because the food at Panera Bread isn't that healthy. I literally would eat the same salad every day and take a break around 4.30 to 5 p.m. If I did end up eating at Panera Bread, I would usually wait and eat there for dinner. That way I could stay until closing because they close at 9 p.m. This was my favorite thing. It would normally be like my Friday treat if I went to Panera Bread on a Friday. This Chipotle chicken and bacon flat bread pizza y'all it's like 900 calories but it is so good and it was great because I could order from my table continue studying just pick it up as rapid pickup and eat it there at my table and like I said I would continue studying there until they close If I don't eat dinner at Panera Bread, I try and be home at least by 7 p.m. It's really hard to get me back by that time. But I get back and I take a little bit of a break while I eat dinner. After dinner, I head back upstairs to the home office. And this is where I spend more hours during the night times studying for the last leg of the night. I know it probably seems a little excessive to study again after studying for hours earlier in the day. But after I eat dinner, I actually have a burst of energy. I don't require myself to do this last round of studying. 
After I eat dinner, I either feel completely tired and worn out and ready to go to bed, or I'm re-energized and I feel like I can study again. This is the hard part where I really get myself off of my schedule. The plan is to go to bed by 10, 15 p.m., but sometimes I don't leave Panera Bread by 7 p.m., which means I may not eat dinner until 8 p.m., maybe 9 p.m., and then by 10 p.m., I'm full of energy and still ready to study. So you can see why sometimes I don't normally wake up at 8.30. Either way, this is how I break up my day and how I get in so many hours of studying. I really think that switching my environment around helps out a lot. that staring at screens for this many hours in the day really put a strain on my eyes so I actually got these blue light glasses off of Amazon I'll have them linked down below for you guys so this is my MCAT study routine I have made a lot of changes to it but this is the one that has been working for me it's really hard to find a balance when you're studying full-time for something that's so important I found that the longer I studied for it, the more I felt like I was forgetting information but learning and studying and practicing information this way has allowed me to increase my score and just over Overall feel more comfortable and confident with the amount of information that I have to learn and study for the MCAT. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to give me a thumbs up, follow me on social media, and live each day to the fullest because you only live once. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!